Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Father Charlie, Father John, from uh, and the St. Albert the Great community, I want to welcome everyone to the Catholic Teaching for the Deacon series and program. My name is Deacon Jose Trujillo. I am one of five deacons here at St. Albert the Great. Deacons are called to believe what they read and teach what they believe and practice what they teach. With the Catholic Teachings by the Deacons series, the St. Albert the Great Deacons intend to carry out this work of missionary discipleship to teach the Catholic faith they believe and profess to be the truth. Before we start, let us begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we're going to invoke the Holy Spirit too. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Okay. As I mentioned before, my, um, my topic is on St. Augustine, Doctor of Grace and Doctor of, of, of the Catholic Church. And one of the reasons I decided on this, on this topic uh, of St. Augustine is because I, was, uh, I didn't realize it until now, or very years ago, that I was, I was baptized at St. August, Augustine Catholic at the cathedral in, in the Diocese of Laredo, Texas, when I was young. Uh, and also, was, I was also, uh, I was confirmed six months later at that point in time when I, uh, the Catholic Church used to baptize and, and confirm people uh, when they were still uh, infants. So this is my connection with uh, St. Saint, Saint, Saint Augustine. If you, I'll be going back and forth calling him St. Augustine because that's a Spanish version of the name. And I'm used to St. Saint, Saint Augustine, St. Saint Augustine. Um, um, Instead of, as, instead of St. Augustine. Um, if you ever get a chance to, to go there, it's a beautiful church right now. It's, going under, it's under renovation, but hopefully this coming month it'll be open in, in June. Uh, so it's a beautiful church. Uh, for me, it's beautiful. That's where I was baptized and became a, 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 a Christian. Some of the topics I hope to just, uh, talk about today is uh, to find out who, who is St. Augustine. What were his uh, uh, beginning years like? Uh, who, is, who is he a patron saint of? What is his name of his famous autobiography? Who is his famous mother? And how he was converted? Here are some of the sources, and, and some, in case you ever want to uh, learn a little bit more about him. One of the books that, that, that I've used, and uh, I've gotten lots of information from, is this one right there on St. Augustine, Man, Pastor, and, uh, and mystic. Also, the one that's real near and dear to my heart is the Confession of St. Augustine. I've read that book three times already. So uh, it's, 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 a good, it's, a, it's a good and awesome book. And also, uh, On the Trinity, it's another good book to read. And of course, uh, the, the New American Bible. And uh, as I talk about St. Augustine, you'll find out that he used the epistles of Paul for, for his conversion. So uh, the Bible is also a good source to read. You want to know um, not, about, not, about, not only about Jesus Christ, but also by St. Augustine and why he believed in that. The world's most famous autobiography, The Confession of St. Augustine, begins not by focusing on the writer, but on God, the divine author, author of everything. And he starts with the very first line, the very first paragraph. You are great and greatly to be praised. Great is your power and your wisdom is infinite. You awake us to delight in your praise for you made us for yourselves and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. St. Augustine wrote the Confessions in 397 AD. He wrote the Confessions because he loved the truth. He wanted men to know the kind of man he was and how much he owed to God's mercy. St. Augustine, uh, also known as St. Augustine of Hippo, is a bishop, was a bishop and a doctor of the church, and is best known, as I mentioned, for his confessions. 
It's his autobiograph it's an autobiography uh, and, an account, and basically it accounts for his conversions. His conversion, I mean. His writings influenced the development of Western philosophy and Western Christianity and is viewed as one of the most important church fathers of the Latin church in the early church, of the early church fathers, I mean. His many important works also include the City of God on Christian doctrine and confessions. For a thousand years, or until the publication of the Imitation of Christ, St. Augustine's confessions are the most common manual of the spiritual life. Some of the works are, are, are many, some of them were lost, uh, uh, and the ones we know about are, are uh, 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 he wrote about in different areas. Uh, he, he first we know about his I just mentioned his autobiography, and also let me go back. He wrote about philosophy, and 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 also wrote uh, uh, and about he wrote about seven works on, on uh, uh, other works on philosophy, and civics, and also. Uh, related to philosophy was music. I don't know how he related to music, but he did. He wrote about six different books on the philosophy of music, and one on general apology, the city of God, plus four other works, including 120 letters, and also wrote about the controversies of the time with different heretics, which included the Manichaeans. He wrote seven books on them, and, and defending the, the, the faith against, uh, against them and against other heretics. The Donatists, the, he wrote five books, or five letters, I mean five books and plus various letters, the Pelagians, he wrote seven books about them, and the Semi-Pelagians, he wrote three books about them, and of course, a book on Arianism. As I mentioned before, there's other books that we'll never know about because they were burned or lost or destroyed. He wrote about spiritual ex uh, exegesis, which is the, the Doctrina Christiana. He wrote about the, uh, about the dog, dogma, dogma and the moral exposition. Uh, one of his famous books is the, the, on, the, on the Trinity, which took him about 15 years to write. And of course, one on uh, on faith, hope, and love. And he wrote various books on on pastoral and uh, and, and, and and teaching, uh, and 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 he also wrote the the, the rule of uh, of the of Saint Augustine, the monastic rule. I mean, Saint Augustine uh, was, with the exception of Saint Thomas Aquinas, the greatest single intellect of the Catholic Church, or that has it ever produced. His influence dominates the Western world, uh, dominated the Western world for a thousand years. Augustine was born at Tagaste, now, which, is, uh, which is now in Algeria, in northern Africa, on the 13th of November in 354, and he died on the 28th of August uh, in, in the year 430, at the age of 76. His Latin name was Aurelius Augustine's Hipponus, and many of his were, were present when he passed away. Although he was African by descent, he was a, he was a Roman in culture and language. He was of mixed race ancestry. Uh, his ancestors included the Phoenicians, the Berbers, and Latins. He, he, but he considered himself Punic, which is the language of, that, uh, of the area. Latin was his first language that he spoke and mastered. Punic, of course, the local language. He learned Greek unwillingly, and he had a, he had a hard time learning Greek. Uh, uh, but he mastered Latin, uh, Latin, and he ta taught it in various areas, and also in Rome. His, his mother, Saint Monica, was a devout Christian, and she was a great influence on him. And why he, he uh, even though he wandered off from the faith, and why he came back, it, 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 so he owes it to her. And she was a very devout Christian. She had had, when he was born, uh, signed him with a cross and enrolled him in, as a catechumen, but unable to secure his baptism. At that time, uh, it was common practice for Christians to defer the baptism until uh, later on in years for the fear of, of greater guilt they would occur by sin sinning after baptism. This was a custom back then, but Augustine himself and the church later condemned, condemned this custom, and they started, uh, uh, and it was forbidden. And later on, as you know, we, we baptize babies now, even infants, I mean. Her grief um, was great when young Augustine was, uh, had felt gravely ill, and he agreed to be baptized because he was going to die, or well, they thought he was going to die. But he recovered, and he withdrew his consent about, uh, about uh, joining the, 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 the faith. As a matter of fact, he denounced the, uh, the Christian faith at that point. St. Augustine had a brother named Novigis, 
and I'm sorry if I could pronounce some of these names a little bit hard for me, and he also had a named sister who later became an abbess of a, uh, of a convent in Hippo. His father, Patrick or Patricius, while holding an official position in the city, remained a, ca a pagan until he converted on his deathbed. Augustine was a Christian because of his mother. She, was, she took him to school, took him to Christian school to, 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 learn, to learn the faith, and she was very devout about doing that. She would walk him to school and take him, or he would even go, uh, in some areas he had to go out, uh, out, of, out of his city, he would go and, and she would take him there. St. Augustine was, has painted an enduring picture of his mom, uh, St. Monica, who was silent under the, uh, the abuse of her, of her violent tempered husband. And I'm talking about, not about physical, but uh, uh, mental abuse. But she was devoted to the service of God and to neighbor in ever repeating scandals. Augustine believed in God and providence divine judgment because of her. He had, his heart, uh, he had in his heart the name of Jesus, all, again, because of his mom. St. Augustine had to leave school due to a lack of money. And when he was 16 years old, um, uh, he went off and, and uh, was even involved, I guess you would call it now, gang. gang. He was with gangs or with uh, uh, delinquents that, that were causing trouble. So that's how he started on, on this path of impurity. So he had strong passions as a youth, and it led him to sins of impurity. At the age of 17, he fell in love with a woman whom he never names, or never named. And although Augustine largely played down the relationship in the Confessions, explaining that he was infatuated with the idea of romantic love and had no control of his lustful desires, he seemed clearly to be in love with her. Unfortunately, however, he felt he could never marry her because she was of a, a lower social class. The unnamed woman therefore became Augustine's lover, and by all accounts he was faithful to her, and in their second year together they had a child when he was 18. He was, and they gave him the name of Adele Dadis, which means a gift from God. Of course, as I mentioned before, they never married, and later on she went back to Africa. And one of the reasons she did is because his mother, Monica, wanted him to marry uh, someone in his social status, and uh, he, she arranged them. They, uh, they arranged a marriage for him, but he never got married. Matter of fact, as soon as she left, he found another lover, and this is where he quotes the famous saying, "Give me chastity and continence, but not yet." And this is from chapter eight of his confessions. He admits that that he went and found another lover because he just couldn't, uh, 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 he couldn't be pure. Okay. Augustine's early years, uh, from 19 to, uh, 19 to 33, were, were basically in sin. He fell away from the Catholic faith, and the first of several significant turning points in Augustine's life occurred when, when he read uh, Cyril, uh, Cyril, Cyril's uh, Hortensius at the age of 19. He was converted to a higher life of philosophy, yet it did not win him over completely because they did not mention the name of Christ. And this is very important about St. Augustine. In the back of his mind, he always had Christ. And again, it goes back to his mom, to his mother, St. Monica, who constantly reminded him about Christ and about his, uh, about, about, and, uh, and he had that in his background, the, the uh, Christ, Christ in the Catholic Church. He then joined the Manicheans, a Christian heresy to which he would be devoted for nine years. But uh, the main reason for, for his doing was, was that they called themselves or he joined them with because they follow, they call themselves followers of Christ, and he and they claimed to, and that unlike the Catholics, they 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 were pure and they were a pure and, spir and a spiritual Christianity. He became a critic at that point of the Catholic Church. He went on to Carth Carthage to meet the leader of the Manichaeans, whose name was Faustus, but after meeting with him, he became very badly disillusioned because they did not speak about the, the name of Christ, uh, Jesus. He left for it, and afterwards he left shortly after that, after meeting, meeting and talking with him. He left uh, uh, for, and got a position as an orator in Milan. He arrived in Milan just before his uh, 30th birthday, and it was there he would experience some of the most one of the most famous conversions in Christian history. He left Carthage and set out for Rome after meeting Faustus and without, and without his mother. He just left in the middle of the night without knowing, not letting his mom know, because his mom would follow him around, and he just left, got on the boat, and went off. 
And of course, she was very disappointed. And he became, also became disappointed with both Rome and the leaders of the Manichaeans. And therefore, for this uh, particular uh, religion or this uh, faith belief, he, it was a dead issue for him, so he left them. It was during this time of despair and this time that Augustine discovered Neo-Plaetism. I think I have it right here on, the, on, the, on, 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 the, on, on your screen. He was pleasantly surprised by its agreement with Christianity and found also in its writings a cure for his doubt and a solution for, for the problem of evil. So if you can see, he went on, uh, he went on to, different, to, different, uh, to different other beliefs. He went on to the academics, which is, were philosophers, uh, and uh, didn't, uh, he had no idea he would, or even thought about going back to the Catholic faith. That wasn't anywhere in his, in his, in his, uh, in his thoughts or dreams. He turned, and then later on, but later on he turned enthusiastically to, um, he turned to, to the epistle of St. Paul, which revealed the weakness of the other, the other beliefs, the Neoplatonists and, and Platonists, uh, Platonists, I mean, and in the epistles of St. Paul, Augustine found uh, the teachings that, that, that the other books didn't contain, the mystery of Christ, the depths of which uh, he had not yet realized. In the pages of Paul, Augustine encountered Christ, but simply, not simply Christ the teacher, but Christ the incarnate word, Christ the redeemer of the race and, uh, and the source of grace. He also came to know humility, and this is the big thing about him. For him, intelligence and, 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 and knowledge were important. Humility was not part of the uh, component in, in that issue, because he was proud to be intelligent proud to know, uh, 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 to know wisdom, or he thought what his idea of wisdom was, but there was no humility in him. But when he read, uh, when he started reading the epistles of St. Paul, uh, that's when he started finding out what real humility was, and confesses, and, and, and that, and that confess, confesses its own insufficiencies and pleads for, uh, actually, basically pled for, for grace, the, spirit, the, grace of, the sacrifice of grace that offers thanks to God for, for, for his gifts and the pledge of the Holy Spirit, which is the basis of hope and reaching uh, the goal, which became his goal. But still, he was unable to take the final step. And it wasn't until he consulted a priest named Simplicius, Simplicius uh, that, that, uh, that he, uh, he really uh, uh, began his conversion. Uh, Simplicius had converted another pagan before by the name of Victor. Torianus, and, 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 and he was also uh, this particular priest, who was simply was a priest, but he was a counselor of St. Uh, uh, Ambrose, or Bishop Ambrose, I mean, which later became uh, St. Ambrose. And uh, uh, as just a side note, he's, he was the one who, bish, who, who baptized uh, uh, St. Ambrose. Soon after, another Christian friend told uh, Augustine about the life of, uh, of St. Anthony, he began to change. These stories greatly inspired Augustine. And he was left with a great desire to give up the world for God, as, as they did. Yet still, he could not do it. For some reason, he could not do it. Though he longed to give all to God, he felt inescapably held back by this, by, by, because of his lust and, and ambitions. Augustine applied to become a teacher of rhetoric for the city of Milan and was accepted. There he met, in Milan, the devout and highly regarded Bishop Ambrose, at first Augustine was attracted to Ambrose's rhetoric and style, but slowly the bishop's message began to penetrate his heart. And uh, before this, uh, St. Ambrose had, uh, had spoken to his mother, St. Saint, Saint Monica, and, one of the, and she went in crying to him and telling him to help her son to convert. And uh, he said, you know, because of your tears, he will convert one day. The love in his heart and your tears will convert him. There's no way that as many tears as you shed that he will not convert. So uh, she uh, spoke to him, and, and Ambrose, of course, uh, did what he could. Originally attending, to, uh, atten attending Ambrose's summons to, to, uh, to observe the preacher celebrating over his skills, Augustine was unexpectedly influenced by the message itself. In other words, he was influenced by his homilies. And this is a, 
a good, I, I guess, a good point to make to, to all clerics that are out there listening, if you are listening, your homilies can change people. Your homilies can turn people uh, or, or bring them back to the faith, just like it did St. Augustine. And uh, he, was a good, he, was a good, uh, he was a good preacher, basically what it was. And, and he, uh, and this is, what, this is where St. Augustine started, uh, started his, his road back to, to, to God, to Christ, to the Catholic Church. He discovered that the Catholic, the, the Catholic Church would be, could be reasonably defended, particularly against the Manichaeans, and that many of the troubling Old Testament passages could be interpreted uh, 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 allegorically. Austin went to hear the bishop every Sunday. It was St. Augustine's sermons that caught his attention and gave him reason for hope. Ambrose adopted Augustine as a spiritual son after the death of, his, of Augustine's father. His final two steps of his conversion came when a fellow, fellow uh, countryman, Pontitian, a Roman officer, came to Milan to visit uh, Augustine and his friend and one of his close friends, Alpheus, who were staying, uh, both of them were staying in a villa in Milan. Pontitian was an African and a Christian, who, uh, and also he was a Roman officer, uh, and he, arrived at, uh, he had arrived to visit at the villa. While visiting, uh, Ponti, while visiting, Pontius noticed a copy of the Epistles of Paul uh, that, that were on the table where they, were, where they sat and talked. And he looked through the book and noticed uh, that that was the Epistles of Paul. So that inspired him to tell Augustine and his, uh, and his close friend about, about his conversion story, and also the conversion story of two associate military officers who were converted and vowed a life of chastity when they had read the life of Anthony of the Desert. When Pontitian was gone, Augustine turned to Alpheus and he said, what is the matter with us? What is wrong with us? Yes, it, uh, what is it? Didn't you hear what this man said? Uh, uh, this soldier, uh, not a really, you know, not a, not a philosopher or a great thinker like us, was able to convert, was able to turn to God. And, and us, the intelligent, I guess guys, I'm paraphrasing, can't do that. We were too ashamed to follow, to follow them. So his mind was on, was on fire. He ran out of the garden of the villa with his friend, with the epistles of Paul, flung, and he flung uh, under his arm and flung himself, weeping out of the garden and finding solitude under a remote tree. His friend was sort of uh, off to the side too. There he babbled like a child and he kept saying, how long, how long, how long am I gonna be like this? Tomorrow? And tomorrow what? Why not now? Why should there be, not be an end to my uncleanliness now? And he kept on whipping, whip, uh, cleaning, I mean, uh, whimpering and, uh, and crying. And finally, he heard a, a voice, an unexpected cry from, uh, from God, summoning them out of the clouds. But the voice he heard, he, that was what he was, I'm sorry, that's what he was expecting. He was hearing God to come up with a great voice, with, with, with his voice, tell him to, 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 to overcome and give him some great message. But instead, he heard it from an unknown child, that was chanting, Tolilaji, Tolilaji, take up and read, take up and read. So Saint, Saint Augustine got up and went to where his friend was and took the, the copy of, uh, uh, of the Paul, of the Epistle of Saint Paul that was beside him. And he opened the book and, uh, to, and it came to the, epistles, uh, to the epistles and it was opened to Romans chapter 13, verse 13, 14, where Paul demands that the servants of Christ should renounce, renounce all pleasures, voluptuous pleasures. And it says, let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and take no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. Again, that's on Romans chapter 13, verse 13 to 14. And this occurred in the summer of, uh, of, of 386. And during the night of Holy Saturday on April 24th, 387, he was baptized by Bishop Ambrose together with his son and his friend Alpheus. For, for St. Monica, her life work of converting her son was complete. 
she suddenly became sick and died in Ostia, a town south of Rome. Um, her, her and her uh, and 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 her son were wanted to take her back because they thought since she was uh, from Africa that she would want to go back and be buried with her family uh, or near St. Augustine's home uh, where they lived on, on their property. Uh, but uh, she said uh, during her, uh, her last illness, uh, uh, her, uh, she talked to her sons, she was telling her sons, she considered, uh, she, was, she wrote, she, she, uh, she uh, helped raise her, uh, his, her grandson and basically was just wished, wanted to be there. And she asked that, uh, that they, uh, and tearfully she told him, uh, the bury, me, bury me where you want to, but just bury me. And she said, and, uh, and she replied, so full of faith in the mass, my sons, bury, me, bury my body where you will. Do not trouble yourselves about it. I ask you only this, remember me whenever you come to the altar of God. Isn't that awesome? She didn't care where she was buried. She wanted to be buried, but she wanted her sons to remember her and invoke her name in church. That year also, uh, 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 Eliditus, his son, and Augustine returned to Africa, and they went to live in, uh, at Augustine's home, the family property. Soon afterward, his son passed away too. Augustine sold his property but, and gave the money to the poor. The only thing he kept from his, was his family home which he converted into a, mon into a monastery for himself and a group of friends. Augustine traveled uh, to live a quiet life in a monastic style near Tagaste. He wanted nothing more than to lead a monk's life. He didn't want anything else. He just wanted to live like a monk. He avoided towns and ne that needed a bishop, fearing that he'd be chosen as a bishop, as was, as, as was St. Ambrose. And this is what happened back in, at that time. Uh, they found someone that was intelligent, someone that was close to God, that was uh, biblical in nature, he, they, they would try to uh, make him a bishop. So he didn't want to stop anywhere, and so because he, this is what he was afraid of. Okay. He went to Hippo, uh, who had a very healthy bishop. I'll just put it to you that way. His name was Valerius, a Greek. But the bishop was looking for an outstanding priest who could preach at, in Latin better than himself. He was Greek, as I mentioned, and he couldn't, uh, he barely uh, uh, managed the language. The bishop told the people how badly he needed help of a priest. Augustine was, uh, was there amongst the people, faithful and was listening during this homily or this uh, sermon. The, con the congregation uh, approached the unsuspecting uh, Augustine and they seized him and led him to the bishop and, 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 and as I mentioned before, Augustine, Augustine didn't want to be a priest. That was the last thing on his mind. He just wanted to lead a monk's life. And they took him to him, and he was tearful. He says, no, 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 please. I don't want to be a priest. I just want to, I just want to pray to God all day long. I want to be a monk. But later he accepted and was ordained. In 391, as I mentioned, he was ordained a priest in Hippo in Algeria. He became, uh, later on, he became a famous preacher, as you know. In 395, he became the co-agent bishop of Hippo. And it was funny, at that time, there was a trend going on or that of stealing bishops from other towns. And his bishop at that time told him, you need to go into hiding. You become pretty famous. And you're gonna, if, if you're not careful, somebody's come and kidnap you tonight and take you to their town to become their bishop. And I guess this was uh, something they did back then. They found someone that was a good preacher, they'd take him. And and uh, for, and to their town to 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 because they needed a bishop and there were many bishops that, many towns that were in need of bishops so he was afraid so he went hiding there he wouldn't he was very careful where he went making sure that he wouldn't be kidnapped and become a bishop somewhere else he just uh, as I mentioned he reluctantly become a priest we became a uh, co co co, co bishop of Hippo that's all he really uh, really wanted to uh, do and and wanted to do but as 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 history has it as a God wants. He became a bishop in 396. He became the Bishop of Hippo, and, and that's where we get the name for him, St. Augustine of Hippo. He was a bishop for 36 years until he died in August 28th in the year 430. Augustine worked tirelessly in, in trying to convert people. He never stopped. He did it through, through, his, through, uh, uh, to, through, his, uh, through, through his homilies. Though he left uh, his homily, he continued to lead a monastic life 
where he lived at in, in the Episcopal residence. Uh, but that, uh, his, his, true, his true love was uh, uh, in living in a monastery. And that's why he had so much, uh, 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 he's called the patron saint of the regular clergy. Much of Augustine's later life was recorded by one of his friends, and, 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 and this is how we still have some of his, some of his uh, writings. At that time, uh, I didn't realize this, but reading more about uh, 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 peop- uh, bishops at that time, bishops were, uh, at that time, the only individuals allowed to preach. Uh, and and, and, he, he's, he's, and Augustine would schedule times to preach, so that uh, even though he had a busy schedule, he prepared homilies and sermons, uh, uh, and other, uh, so he could preach and, t- and, and teach people, preach to people so, or, or, or give homilies so they could learn about the Catholic faith. As, as a bishop, he believed that it was his job to interpret the, the, work, the work of the Bible. He wrote his, auto, as I mentioned, the autobiograph, autobiography, The Confessions, in 397. Then he wrote his other famous book, The City of God, was basically was written to console the fellow Christians uh, uh, shortly after the Visigoths had sacked Rome in 410. Augustine worked tirelessly to convince the people of Hippo to convert to Christianity. And... Uh, um, he continued to do that constantly, constantly, and constantly. Shortly before the death of Vandals, a Germanic tribe who had converted to Arianism invaded Roman Africa. The Vandals besieged Hippo in the spring of 430 and uh, when Augustine entered his final illness. According uh, to one of his friends, one of the vehicles attributed to Augustine was the healing of an ill man that took place in the siege. Augustine spent his final days of prayer and repentance. Uh, re- requesting the penitential psalms of David, which he which were hung on the walls for him to read, and he directed the library of the church in Hippo and all the p- books therein to be carefully preserved. And unfortunately, at this time, uh, he he died, but uh, some of his books got burned. And um, but a- after as soon as uh, as soon as well, actually when when the vandals left, they they sacked and sieged Hippo, and but later on they they left him, but they re- returned and they burned the city. They destroyed all but uh, the cathedral, the Second Augustine's Cathedral and Library, which they left untouched. But still, a lot of his uh, books were 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 uh, were were burned. A lot of his works were burned. They tried the best they could to to save whatever they could. He died, as I mentioned, and on on the on the twenty eighth, but uh, 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 of August, and this is the day we celebrate his, his saint day, the 28th. It's odd because when I was, uh, if you, uh, and this, I recommend everybody to do this, look at your, look at your baptism, baptism uh, certificate. I was, I was baptized on the 26th of August, and it was two days before the, the Feast of St. Augustine, uh, uh, which, uh, which is we celebrate on the 28th. So it's sort of odd that I remember, I remember little things about that and, um, and about my, my, my feast day, my, birth, my, my, my Christian birthday, which is the 26th of of August. Augustine was canonized by popular acclaim. It, they didn't canonize priests, uh, I guess it's different than they do now, that they have to go through all the cardinals, but he was canonized by popular acclaim and later recognized as a doctor of the church in 1298 by Pope Boniface VIII. And as I mentioned before, his feast day is the 28th of August. St. Augustine is a patron saint of, uh, of, of those considering uh, 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 those considering coming back to the faith, and um, he's a uh, patron saint of printers, theologians, philosophers, uh, and for some, uh, and uh, of a number of cities and, and dioceses, and of brewers. I don't know why, but of brewers he is, and also he's also uh, invoked against sore eyes for some reason. Okay, and there we have it. Some of the works of St. Augustine I'm going to discuss now are, um, that are, I'm not going to discuss all of them, there are too many of them, but I'm going to discuss a couple of them. One was his autobiography, The Convention of St. Augustine, uh, which is a history of his heart. It's not, I'm not sure if I told you before, but I read it three times already. There's not a time that every time I read it that I don't shed a tear. Matter of fact, I shed a lot of tears. And I've, I'm not sure how many books I've, uh, uh, of Saint, uh, the Convention I've gone through, but every time I read it, I, I learned something new about St. Augustine, and um, the one thing I do learn about it is what, it te- what he's saying, he's talking about God's mercy. He wrote, the, uh, he wrote the confession because he loved the truth. He wanted men to know 
the kind of man he was and how much he owed to God, to God's mercy. And this is the one thing he talked about a lot. God is merciful. God is merciful. God is merciful. If there were three words I wanted to say that he would say God is merciful, especially, uh, 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 he says, for a wretched man like himself. And I, I say it for myself, but to me, this is why stroke atoned to me. Uh, as, uh, I w- I'm a sinner. I was a, s- a greater sinner. But, uh, after, uh, but after I read this, uh, I, you know, it gave me hope. Uh, I read it, the first time I read it was before I became a deacon, or before I even thought about going to diaconate. And uh, I looked at it and read it and cried at that time. And, and I knew there was hope for me. And there's hope for anybody that's left of faith, especially for any parent out there that's had a child that's left. Or if you left, uh, read the book or, uh, or read some of the works, other works of St. Augustine. And, it, and, and he tell, tells you about hope. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. You can always go back to God. Another book uh, or another work of his uh, uh, that, that he wrote that's very important is called The Retractions. Uh, uh, back then, we, uh, the word retraction wasn't known as we know it today. It's more like revisions. Or in other words, it'd be, it'd be, it, would something, it would be something he would discuss again. So basically what he did, he, he did a revision of his works uh, and, and, uh, and explained the occasion and dominant idea of each. And they're a guide, you know, they're a guide for, for, uh, for, uh, for, to know how St. Augustine Augustine thought, taught. The other book that's uh, very important is Saint, uh, The City of God. As I mentioned before, this book was written, uh, it, uh, there's about, it was written about 413 to 426 near uh, the, when the Romans, when Rome was attacked by the, by, by the barbarians. And one of the consequences, and, and the reason it was written is to, um, was, uh, because the, the barbarians were saying the, con- the reason Rome got sacked is because it, you left paganism. Uh, for, uh, this is what he was, uh, and, this is because, and you now had Christian wor- uh, emperors. So that's why you were invaded. And, and, uh, and the city of God, uh, in, in the city of God, Rome defends, uh, uh, defends the Catholic faith. Uh, basically, he was saying the city of God is the Catholic Church. And it doesn't matter what you do against the Catholic Church, it is going to exist. No matter what you do or try to do, try to race it out. Uh, and it's even true now. The, uh, the Catholic Church continues existing, no matter, and even at the time of St. Augustine, uh, they exact, sacked Rome. And, uh, and it was a great uh, Christian uh, uh, city, but uh, after, after it got converted, but it's still around. It always will be. The city of God is, as I mentioned, the Catholic Church, according to St. Augustine. The plan of God will be worked out in history as a as the organized forces of good in this, city, in this city gradually overcome the evil, the forces of evil, or the forces of uh, the war against the will of God. And this is always going to be the case. No matter how bad uh, the times are, God always wins. And he always has and he always will. The next great book is, uh, was the Trinity. Uh, this one was about four, 15 books long. It's a very long book. And it's wrote in, uh, uh, in, in, in different sections. Um, he wrote, I think, eight of them first, um, and then um, went on and wrote the other ones the rest of his life. He wrote it, it took him about 16 years to write it, and this was the longest one he wrote, the biggest and longest uh, book he wrote. Unfortunately, uh, some of the early volumes were, were stolen. Uh, uh, it's like if somebody had, ri- you had written a book and you hadn't proofread it completely yet, but there were several copies, in, and it's like if you were to throw something in the trash can, you know, something you had done, somebody picked it up and they took it and went with it and said, this is what you wrote. And this is what happened to him. Uh, they took, uh, uh, they took, they t- took some of the first volume, they stole them, and they, and, and they went and republished them like if it was, it, or rewrote them, like if this was what he would r- want to write. But no, he had re- revised that and uh, continued writing. At that point, it was only eight books and it increased to, I believe, 15 books that he wrote at the end. So, um, so that, 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 wasn't, you know, that wasn't the only thing he wrote. So he was very upset about that, that some of his friends who were eager to publish his, his works had, had stolen, stolen or gotten a hold of, of, of the earlier copies which weren't ready for publication. The whole idea of the, of the Trinity is that uh, it tells us about our, uh, that we have to start to believe the Trinity, you have to, you have to start with uh, uh, faith as a starting point. And we come, and we can, uh, 
And from there, we, uh, we can know that we are created images of, uh, of the Trinity. And if you ever get a chance to read some of it, I've used it in some of my homilies. And the Trinity, basically what, what St. Augustine is saying in the Trinity is that, that God, the, God, uh, God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit are all about love. God begot the Son, loves the Son, I mean, love the Son, again, to us for, for, for our salvation. Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the love of God the Father and the Holy Trinity, all in one. And with that is how we survive. But he admits at the end, humbly admits, it's a mystery. Like all of his works, and like anybody else, it's a mystery. We will not know it or enough about God or about this work, the Trinity, until we get to heaven and are face to face to God. Now, what I want to discuss next is uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, uh, some stuff that's true about him and some that is not so true. Uh, there are pictures of Saint Augustine uh, that are not completely true. For instance, a vision of Saint Augustine in the Trinity, and this is one of the most common pictures you'll you'll, you'll see about him in art. But it doesn't do, truly give you a correct idea of who Saint Augustine is. Uh, in this particular case, you see a little boy. Uh, Saint Augustine is was a contemplating the Trinity and uh, was walking by the seashore. seashore. And uh, as he was walking, he ran into a little child that was running, and this little child was running back and forth, uh, going over to the sea, coming back and forth. And he was bringing water to a spot in a, in a little, in a little uh, container, a little shell. The boy was using the shell to carry the water from the large ocean and poured it into a small pit that he had made in the sand. Augustine came to him and asked him, what are you doing? And the little boy was saying, I ain't going to pour the entire ocean into this hole. And the, and the boy replied, what? And, 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 and Augustine replied, said, what? And he said, that is impossible, my dear child. The sea is so great. How are you going to put it in that, you know, and how are you going to fill that little hole? And he said, this is true, that's what the little boy said. But it would be easier and quicker to draw the, all the water out of the sea and fit it into this hole than to you to fit the mystery of the Trinity and his divinity into your little intellect. For the mystery of the Trinity is greater and larger in comparison to your intelligence than in this vast ocean in comparison with this little hole. Uh, uh, and like I said, this doesn't end just to St. Saint, to Saint Augustine because uh, St. Augustine knew that many of the Christian ministries, um, mysteries, I mean, are incomprehensible. So this really doesn't do, and it's probably not true. This is, this, this, uh, this story is also attributed to two or three other saints that also did, uh, basically said did the same. Another legend, and basically it's a legend, another one is the, the seashell. Some say that the St. Augustine had been walking with an angel sent by God to teach him a lesson on, on intelligent pride, intelli intellectual pride, I mean. Others say that it was Christ, the Christ child himself, who came to remind Augustine of the limits of human understanding in relations to the great mystery of the faith. Because of this story, the seashell has become a symbol of St. Augustine and the, and, and the study of theology. But again, it's only, uh, um, it's only uh, um, a story. It's not, it may or may not be true, just like the, the other one that I showed you earlier about the little boy in, in, at, the sea, at the side of the, of, the, of the sea. The other one that I saw that was pretty interesting, and I'm, and I'm giving it to you now, is this picture of St. Augustine with a devil. If you, notice, if you notice something, you can see it. You might, I'm not sure you can make a bigger picture. You notice the devil has two little eyes on his butt. And that's for a reason. And I'll tell you that in a little bit. Uh, and when, I, when I looked at it at first, I said, that's odd. Uh, but this picture, uh, this painting was made by, uh, well, it was painted by Michael Patcher in the 15th century. And it's called The Devil Presenting St. Augustine with the Book of Vices. And some uh, and some claim some sources claim that this is actually a painting of Saint Wolfgang. So really, it may 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 not be true. Who was uh, who also legend ran, had a run in with the devil. In this famous painting of Saint Augustine, the devil is is, is uh, the devil is was walking from about the city, holding a large book which contained a list of the sins of men. Saint Augustine asked uh, asked him to to see to see the page that concerned him. He saw just one sin. Uh, in, in the book, oh, St. Augustine just saw one sin, and that was that he had neglected to say his combline prayers, his night prayers. Uh, he, and this is important, those who are, are deacons or clergy, read your night prayers, otherwise your name's gonna be in the devil's book. So uh, anyway, I'm just kidding about that. 
he said the prayers devoutly, and the sin vanished. And the devil ran off, saying, he regretted showing the St. Augustine the book. As I had mentioned, uh, there's a little story about uh, the, the devil right here. Uh, the devil's looking for power. And he's a prideful person. That was his sin, pride. And if you notice, he wanted power over Christ and over, over mankind. And if you notice, he has, uh, like regular uh, angels would have only maybe two eyes. He has four eyes. He has two on his butt. And, and, and the reason for that, he wanted power, but it came with the, uh, power and, and, and prestige and, and uh, over, over, over men. So this is why, and, the, and, and this, is the, the, uh, this is the sin of pride. This is, sin makes you ugly, makes the soul ugly and hard. In this case, he put the, uh, there was a price he paid for it. He has two little eyes on his behind. St. Augustine uh, was, with the exception of St. Thomas Aquinas, the greatest single intellect the Catholic Church has ever produced. He, his influence dominated the Western world for a thousand years. He is recognized as saint in the Catholic Church, in the Eastern Orthodox um, Church, and the Anglican communi uh, Communion. He is also a preeminent Catholic doctor um, and patron of the, saint August of the Augustinians. Many Protestants, uh, especially the Calvinists, and the Lutherans consider him one of their one of their theological fathers, and the, uh, of the Protestant Reformation due to his teaching on salvation and divine grace. Protestant reformers generally, and Martin Luther, and particularly, uh, held Augustine in in, in, prim, uh, in great esteem among the early church fathers. Luther, of course, was from fifteen o from fifteen o five to fifteen twenty one a member of the Order of Saint Augustine of the uh, of the Augustinian Emirates. One of the truest pictures of St. Augustine is that which shows him um, holding, uh, holding up, a, uh, holding up uh, looking up to heaven, a pen in the left hand and a burning heart in the right. If you can notice on here, he has a pen on his right hand and a heart looking up to heaven. Uh, uh, for he, uh, and the reason this is, uh, the whole idea of the picture is, or uh, the message behind it in the picture was, he pursued the knowledge of and love of God with mind and heart, with reason and faith. And this is why we, this is really, if you want a true picture, that would be a true picture of him. And the only other thing I wanted to talk about and what would be on grace and free will. Uh, some Protestants believe or claim that St. Augustine taught predestination and faith alone like Luther and, 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 and Calvin. And they are entirely wrong. St. Augustine of Hippo taught neither doctrine. He did not teach double predestination as it's called. Not, not, that, that not only God predestines God, uh, and their thought was that, that not only does God predestine God to uh, some to heaven, he also pre uh, ordains that others go, will go to hell, so that there is nothing they can do to reverse their eternal damnation. To be clear, John Calvin, uh, John Calvin taught this inorious doctrine and not Martin Luther King, but they were, he was wrong. The Catholics, the Catholic uh, understanding predestination or divine election encompasses man's free will response in accepting God's gift of eternal salvation. As Augustine uh, would say, the great father, the great, uh, would say so well, and this is coming from the Catholic Catechism, uh, also in the Catholic Catechism, uh, chapter 1847, God created us. He did not will to, he, he, but he did not will to save us without us. So, Basically, what he's saying, uh, we have a choice to, to believe in him if you want to be saved. Not, not everybody chooses to be saved, unfortunately, and this is the case. And, and, uh, he's, and, this is, uh, and he wrote his book on grace and, and, and free will for that reason, uh, because there was a lot of uh, erroneous, uh, what he thought was erroneous, uh, uh, and, and, that, and that, that St. Paul would ever write about that. John and, and the other uh, evangelists would never write about that. Jesus Christ would not teach that. But, is, we do, but God requires our free will, our free will to choose him, to choose him, to be with him. He's not going to force us. He's a perfect gentleman, as I mentioned before in some of my homilies. He is a perfect gentleman, and he loves us, but he wants us uh, from our own free will to return to him. If there is something I wanted to say to, to end uh, this talk, and if you have any, uh, any questions, please call. Um, uh, St. Augustine is, uh, talks uh, about God's mercy. He says, again, you know, 
And he says, God is merciful. Uh, he took a wretch like me, a sinner like me, a great sinner, and let him come back. He brought him back. God was always calling him like he's always calling us. And this is what he was telling us. God is calling us to him. If we're away from this, uh, from him, he's always calling us back to him. And this is when he, and when St. Augustine came back, he was on fire. He was like he wanted to make up for lost time. And he did. It went beyond that. He wrote and wrote copious uh, books, copious letters about the faith and about love of God. Love of God. And that's where it starts. He says, you have to have love in your heart for, to, to understand everything he wrote about. And that's how, what he did. And you have to decide to have that encounter with Christ. And that's what he did. He had that encounter with Christ. He was looking for Christ at, uh, in different areas that, uh, uh, for all the wrong reasons, like the song says, uh, looking for love. And he was, would, would, would tell you, God is great. God is merciful. All you do got to do is decide to go to him. Do we have any questions? Nobody? No, I don't see any questions. Okay. Well, if you do, you can give me, uh, you can send me um, an email. Uh, um, you can, my email's on the parish website. If you have any questions about, about St. Augustine, uh, about any of his works, I'll try to answer them. As I mentioned, and I've mentioned before in the past, uh, I don't do him, and I don't do St. Augustine or any of the other subjects justice in, in, in less than an hour. Uh, he wrote for uh, most of his adult life from the age of 33 until he died about God and about theology, about philosophy, and uh, God's, uh, God's love for us and how he wants to save us. And there's no way I can talk to you in the last 50 minutes about him. It doesn't do injustice. Or any other subject that our deacons here talk about, we... Um, we uh, we do the best we can in this hour, and we do it, uh, and this is why we present this series. We want to give you a nugget of the information that we're talking about on the subject so you can become knowledgeable enough to go and look for some more information uh, on it. You're not going to learn unless you look for the information on any other, on the, any other, uh, the other subjects. I think the next person in line to talk would be, I think, Saint, I mean, um, Saint, Deacon Fook. He is a saintly person, but uh, I think he's, uh, that he's the subject of. Uh, he's our next subject that's coming up, our next person that's going to be talking. So please let's continue to listen on Tuesdays uh, to our Deacon Talks. We, we do a lot. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, maybe George can help me. We've been doing this for about a year, right, George? Easily. Easily a year already. And uh, at first, honestly, I, I wasn't too excited about doing it, but uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of uh, energy to, 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 uh, to do this. For me, St. Augustine was a work of, uh, a work of love because I wanted to know more about him. I wanted to know about the man where I was converted to Christianity, where I was reborn as a Catholic. I wanted to know what was so great about him, because in the back of my mind, there was some, I always wanted to learn and talk about him. I, do, I talk about him in my homilies quite a bit. I talk on him, uh, and I always refer back to, and, and every once in a while read uh, parts of the, of, the, of the confessions. I've been, doing, I've been trying to read the, some of the other books, and, and whenever I have time, I'll go back and pick up the books and read them. Uh, uh, much of the, un, unlike uh, my, my wife who doesn't really like me buying books, I have lots of books about him. And I'm probably going to buy some more books, even though she really, you know, doesn't wants to know where I'm going to put all these books. I'm a book, I love reading, especially about the saints and about how they thought, what they thought, and what made them, God, you know, uh, what made them uh, want to uh, go and be with God. And... And that's the awesome thing about it, to know about what someone thought, especially at this particular time. And the times of St. Augustine are not any different than ours today. Our church is, uh, uh, like it was back then, is under attack. It will always be under attack. There's always going to be someone that's going to say, let's get rid of the Catholic Church, because we can't change it. It won't change. And we wanna, uh, if we can, we'll try to change it to what we, what we want it to be. But it's, uh, if not, let's get rid of it. But this is God's church. This is Jesus Christ's church. This is the church was, that was built uh, uh, on, on th was whose birthday we just celebrated last week uh, uh, on Pentecost, on, and, they, and it started in 33 AD. So we're still here. We're not going to get. You're not. Nobody's going to get rid of us. It's assigned to everybody. We're still here. We're going to be here until Judgment Day, until the end of the world. So we're always here. 
So um, I still got five minutes. If any, anybody has any questions, please call in, or I'm not calling, I'm sorry. Please write in, uh, send, send, send uh, a message to me uh, later on if you want, and I'll try to, try to get you the answer if I can. I enjoyed uh, t uh, talking about, uh, learning about St. Augustine. Uh, I did a, quite a bit of research on him. The more I learned, the more I, I, I learned to love uh, what he did, what he did to defend the faith. He had to defend the faith because it was under attack. And he did it uh, against so many other people. And, um, and, and he was a great uh, preacher. That's, that's why he was loved, because he defended the faith. Well, unless there's no questions, let's go ahead. We're going to uh, close uh, with, with a prayer, with a closing prayer. It'll be the Hail Mary, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us. And let me end with a blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for being with us. And on behalf, and thank you to, to everyone that helped make this production uh, uh, possible. Uh, there's so many out there. You, I mean, we're here in the room right now, there's four of us, but there's many other people that are making this production possible. And without everybody involved, it, it, it would be impossible to do that. Uh, thank you very much, and have a good night. Have a blessed night. Thank you very much. <laughs>